Hey guys, welcome back to my Unity Chain Sim series. And if you've made it here from part one, I highly appreciate the support in advance. And I hope you found it interesting to this point. In these next few segments, we are going to set the terrain up to make the trail, grass, dirt, and inclines using one image to generate it. So let's start creating that image now. So we just modeled the wooden posts in the image. What we're going to do now Along with that, we're going to be creating terrain. So that's how we're going to be making the trail as well as the inclines, the dirt and grass, that sort of thing. We're going to basically generate this using one image. And I'm going to make this image in a program called Paint Pro. Basically, it's kind of a simple paint program from the Mac App Store. I remember like we bought it and like I saw it in like our purchased account. What we're going to essentially do first to make this height map image is we're going to create a grayscale image representation of the height in our terrain. So essentially our terrain is a grid of different vertices that are connected together. Basically, we're going to create a grayscale image where the dark values will move the vertices lower and the lighter values will move the vertices higher. What we're going to do first is fill this background with some kind of middle gray. So what we're going to do next is we're going to just choose the curved line option. What we're essentially going to do with this is make a trail. About 125 seems fine for this. This thing has points. Firstly, we're going to just make it a bit longer, just a bit, just to give ourselves a bit more leeway here. And you can see that when I move the ends, it is kind of curving it. What we're going to do is to move the points of this curve here so that we can get kind of like a, a trail shape. So I guess that's fine. I guess that's fine for now. So what we're going to do next is to create the slope that goes off of the trail like this. So this is basically the main slope that goes downward and this is where we're going to be placing our chains um, and our wooden posts on this edge of the terrain once we have generated it. I guess maybe you adjust the color of it just a bit here. We've, cho we've chosen like a middle gray value for the fill color. And so having the trail at like just above that, I think that's good. Actually, maybe just edit up a bit because the section up here is smaller. Once we have our trail ready, we're going to select the rectangle tool, this drop down first of all, and choose gradient fill type for this rectangle. And we're also going to choose linear. And now what we're going to do is to set it to something like, something like black to white. What we're going to do first is to position this at the highest point of the edge of this trail, this edge, the lower edge. We're going to position this maybe like that. Maybe choose something like 16 for the pixel width. And what we're going to do now is to move this down. Zoom out because, and now, we can just kind of scroll down here, just let the selection do it. It's at 293 right now, so 293 as for the height. Extend the edge, so this lower edge, we're going to extend this, so 293, and we're going to extend it around 50 pixels, 343. So now, we're going to take the gradient the gradient window needs to be open for some reason. And now we're going to change it to a downward direction. Change topmost color of the gradient to basically the trail color. And let's just zoom in on this. And it looks like it's the same as the trail color. And this is important. Copy the image and then paste it down here and place it like somewhere around here and then zoom in and we're going to place the first image on the right and extend it upward just move it upward here and paste it again position this one right next to the first one that we made and then basically just repeat that process until you have all the gradients that you want in here and that will definitely take a while So basically, just keep pasting the gradients, just keep pasting these kind of strips, these like really tall rectangles, and 
line them up to each other. Because this is how we're going to create the curved edge on the gradient, and it's also how we are going to make the gradient actually kind of align with the trail and have this curve going kind of all throughout it. So this takes a while. Okay, so once we've lined these up, once we've placed all of these gradients and then lined them up, what we're going to do is to fix a problem that we're having here. So if you can see here, this kind of stir step like effect, these lines in between each of the gradients. And in gradients, this is an effect that we call banding. Now to fix this, we're going to select all of these gradients. Now we're clicking in the layers and select group selected. And that will essentially group these layers. And I'm going to rename this group to something like main slope. So what this is going to be is it's the slope that goes down from the trail that leads kind of downward from the trail. And that's why it's I'm making it lead to this kind of pure black color. So now what we're going to do is select the group to fix the banding, right click on it, export as image. So this is the option that's right all the way down here. Once you've exported this, if we head into Unity, we can see an image here called Main Slope. If we go ahead and open Paint Pro again, we're going to just move this down a bit, drag this into the Paint Pro window, and now you should see that this this image of all of these gradients is now in this Paint Pro project. And now basically what you want to do is to move it so that it's aligned with the sides and move it significantly up in this case. And now I'm going to make it align with the trail. And I'm also going to just disable the main slope effect. And you can see that we can kind of see through like this image because it has alpha transparency and this will also cause kind of a problem and that's why we extended the edge downward. We talk about that in a bit. We're going to right click on it and choose effect and under effect we're going to choose blur and this is going to apply a blur effect to this. I'm just setting this to you can see that the banding exists here however if we just if we just increase this just by just a bit, we can see that it softens these edges. And this is why we chose something relatively low, like 16, because let me just show you, if we blur it too much, we can definitely actually see, we can actually see some vertical banding if we make the blur too intense. So that's why I chose something relatively small, because if we need to blur it too much, we might have some more of that kind of banding over there, banding this way and not just this way. So we're going to kind of adjust this to the point until the banding becomes invisible and just hit OK. One of the things that you might notice this does is that because it's blurring it, it's making the edge of it allude to the background even though we just aligned it with the trail. We extended the edge of this downward because we need a bit more legroom in the image. We can move the top here without the following happening. So we might see a bit of this happen if we were to make the image smaller than it is. In this case, the image is alluding to the trail here. Select the image and drag it under the curve. And we can also just slightly adjust the colors of the image because even though we made this a color image here, the transparency that the blur effect kind of caused it makes it appear a bit darker there if we move it. So I'm just going to increase the brightness just slightly. So just slightly there. And you can see here it fits in much better with this trail. One more thing that we're going to do is to copy the image. We're going to paste it and then place it over here at the top. And this is how we're also going to create this kind of like the top incline. And you might be thinking, well, how are you going to do that? Same image that you used, and this part is really dark. It's just going to like cause it to be kind of a, like a drop down. Well, we're going to do the same thing that we just did before. We're going to hit adjust colors and change the brightness 
and we might also just change the contrast here just to give it a bit less steep effect here and now we're going to just increase the brightness until it matches up with this and we're going to drag this under the curve just move it down just a bit maybe adjust the colors again and maybe drag the brightness definitely looks a bit and still you can definitely see kind of this banding here so I'm gonna just adjust the contrast something maybe like that I don't know maybe adjusting the contrast causes to be a bit more banding because of like the dynamic range or something but basically we want to match okay so now we're going to create the grass that was in the image and in the terrain I put some grass all over the the height information map image that I used to generate the terrain which is what I'm making right now except for the trail which we don't want grass on the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use the airbrush tool and now I'm going to set the width now here's an interesting thing about the airbrush if you set this to something like 500 just click on there to create an airbrush layer here if you select the airbrush and try to change the color guess what you are not able to change the color so that's obviously something that we don't want and also if we right click on this hit rotate and resize if it's like too small if we want to do that like to do it that way so if we want to make adjustments to it here's what will happen if we do that we'll say 150 by 150 and you can see that it blurs out each of the points in the airbrush and that's because it's treating this whole thing this whole airbrush layer as an image and it's turning it into an image and scaling that up and beyond a certain size threshold so if it's small enough won't behave like this instead it will keep the pixels the point of the airbrush one pixel in diameter so now let's go ahead and create another airbrush and let's set the width to something like 250 and the color is red because I tried to change it and that's the last color I had set let's change it to something like gray and you can see we're able to do that right click on it and select rotate and resize 150 let's say and you can see here that it spreads out every single one of the points instead of treating it like an image so now what we're going to do is to use this as the grass layer so we're going to just I guess we'll just undo the resize to just keep it more simple start from 100% of 250 and we're going to use 250% just check whether that is enough I guess that might not be enough so let's change it something like 125 or something just position it make sure that there is no cutoff like at the edges like the corners of the image that we have points going all the way to the corners of the image because we want grass everywhere except the trail because I which I'll get to in a minute so now what we're going to do is actually to move the airbrush obviously under the curve which we're using as the, as the trail in fact let me go ahead and rename this trail to be more illustrative but also the way that we are going to make each of the points uh, in the grass raised from the terrain because if we were to just use this as it is just export this as it is save this what would happen is that these things would look darker so they would be like completely like very thin like burrowed pointy holes in the terrain but also down here where it's like brighter it will raise the terrain to an even height so down here they'll be really tall and up here they'll be like really short and they'll like taper off and they'll and these will be holes because the points are darker than this point of the gradient so what we're going to do is to make the gradients above the airbrush actually so we're going to change each of them I guess maybe just to make this a group and let's try that now okay adjust opacity is not an option here for groups so we're going to need to do this individually select adjust opacity and what we're going to do is to set it to 75 percent something really high but something that is still suitable and as you can see we are getting definitely this edge here so what we can do is to adjust the colors again maybe I should have done this before adjusting the colors just change the brightness up slightly
we're definitely getting this area where it's just like even color. That kind of concerns me. I don't know. It seems like it's a bit too bright. That looks good. Okay. So now what we're going to do is to move. Did I change the opacity of this to 75? Oh, no, I didn't change the brightness up because this actually is darker than we need. Okay, that I guess looks good to me. Good as I can get it because it's kind of... We're obviously going to need to move the airbrush under the trail. However, because we just made the opacity of the gradients most of what we need it to be, we're going to move the airbrush below the gradients as well. And this will make them just slightly visible. So we want them to be a bit more raised from the fill color. So if you can see here, the fill color is a bit similar, so we can't see them. So now we're going to just change the color to something like this, maybe. And you can see that they're slightly visible. We don't want to make the grass too tall. I guess this is a good like starting value to try using, maybe a bit higher. So what we're going to do now is to save the file. So just hit Command S and when we jump back into Unity, we can see that there is this untitled paint document in this thing. It's named untitled though. To rename this to chain sim, not height mat, height map, create a folder and name it images and put this in there. 